What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Tony Mack. A return of the Mack. What's happening? Or should I say return of the 49ers, y'all? Are we back? Is this the victory that we needed? Is this the win that we needed, y'all? Now, look. I don't know if y'all watch my man, Emmanuel Acho, and uh, Shady and the rest of them guys on Sports Center, or whatever. Not Sports Center, ESPN. It's one of those type of shows. Y'all know what it is. Anyway. They had a question about whose season was over if they lost this game. Was it the San Francisco 49ers or the Dallas Cowboys? But to me, it wasn't about whose season was over because San Francisco, we playing in the trash division. Everybody at the top of our division is tied for four and four. So I don't think even us going three and five was the end of our season. And for the Dallas Cowboys, I think three and four this early, I wouldn't say that's the end of their season as well. So a better question would be, who if they who out of the winner? I'm saying that messed up, y'all. I tried to fix it, but I'm just go go just run it right on back. The better question would be: What team needs a victory to wake up? What team needed that victory last night more to wake up? And it was definitely the San Francisco 49ers. Like I said, our division we all tied four and four, four and four, four and four, and the last team three and four. So I'm not really worrying about where we're going to fall so much in our division. I'm looking at the morale of the team and everything that's going on with us. Look, fellow 49er fans, are y'all still saying we should uh, call for Kyle Shanahan's job? Y'all still saying we should fire Kyle Shanahan? Because once again, I'm going, I am going to defend Kyle Shanahan this year and say that he has been doing a heck of a job as a head coach. Y'all got to remember, we down to our backup backups. We done lost almost every star on the team that was there last year. Kristen McCaffrey gone. Uh, George Kittle not 100%. Debo Samuel not 100%. Brandon Ayuk gone. Uh, Trent Williams not 100%. Brock Purdy out there getting beat. The, the brakes beat off him on certain play. That's why he running out there looking like a young Steve Young. Now, with all that being said, the 49ers could – we definitely should be sitting at 6-2. and two. But we could very well easily be sitting at two and six with all of the star players that we lost. And I'm going to agree with Shannon Sharp and Ocho last night on their show when they said the 49ers have healthy. We could have very well. See what you got to understand, Ocho. The Niners could have very well took care of the Dallas Cowboys if they had all they started playing in there. No C-Mac. No Ayuk. We had all those guys out of the way. And we still found a way to get the dub. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> But neither was my prime date. So, look, it don't matter. As long as you're scoring the end, that's the point I'm trying to make. And we definitely got that with the dub, you dig? And we a much-needed dub before this bye week so we can get our players back. Brad and Ayuk is out for the season. We know he taught ACL, MCL. Prayers go out to him. But I think Christian McCaffrey will be back. I think Jordan Mason, <laughs> that's going to be great for him because he'll have somebody to split that load with. Really not split the load. He'll have the real running back to come back and take over the load. But shout out to Jordan Mason because that ball, he's been moving like a freight train up until last game, y'all, which showed that he was a little injured. Same with Debo Samuel. If y'all noticed, a few plays, Debo looked like he wasn't 100% on it. Other than that throw that Brock Purdy missed, and Debo had to go turn all the way behind him to try to catch that pass when he was wide open and would have put up six on the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I ain't going to act like I wasn't worried. I'm not going to act like I wasn't worried early in the game because the Dallas Cowboys jumped off to a 10-3 to lead on us, and they looked like they was getting comfortable and looked like they was howling us in bully ball. And for the Dallas Cowboys, for the San Francisco 49ers to beat you four times in a row, you should be ashamed of yourselves because you should have had it on your mind coming into this game. If I'm the Dallas Cowboys, if it's any team we got marked on the schedule to handle business with, yeah, I know – Michael Parsons wasn't in the game. Your best player in the last 30 years. Yeah, but well, not the last 30 years, y'all. I'm, I'm, I, that was an exaggeration, y'all. You know, Troy Aikman, Deion Sanders, Michael Irvin, Emmitt Smith, those names still ring a bell. So I'm let me, T.O., let me pull it back a little bit. Let me, Tony Romo, let me pull it back a little bit. Michael Parsons, the best player on your team the last 10 years. I am going to stand on that. We know he didn't play. So did D-Law. But so what? I don't care. We lost everybody in our lineup. We done lost almost. We done lost half the the Pro Bowlers of our team last year. So I don't want to hear the excuses, you fellow Cowboy fans who gonna come to my page and thought all that crying and all that like y'all always do every time your team lose. Either you cry about your team losing or you come up with some whack more victory talking about well 
being that the 49ers beat us 42 to 10 last year, them only beating us by six points is an improvement. Because that's what your team owner slash GM slash head coach slash popcorn stand slash the dude that's selling nachos slash the guy that do everything. Last time I went to a Cowboy game, Jerry Jones was out there parking cars. That's what I'm saying. He do everything and he's doing a little too much. And it's showing because your team looking pitiful this year. And I'm not trying to roll over you while you're down. I'm saying this because y'all know it truly. Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb is the only thing you got working for that offense. And I know y'all going to be like, but Dak Prescott cost him a game. Of course. He only can throw to one receiver. Everybody else can't get open. I seen one play Dak Prescott had a day and a half and nobody got open. What y'all expect a man to do? I can't force you open. You got to get old. Somebody got to do something out here. And then the running game, oh, my God, less than three yards of carry. But come on, Zeke. This ain't the Zeke I know. This ain't Ohio State Zeke. What happened to Halter Top Zeke? What happened to Halter Top Zeke? Halter Top Zeke, he going to break the first tackle every time he get touched. Every time he get touched, he was going to break a tackle. That's what Halter Top Zeke going to do. But now this guy here, he must be conservative. He must have grown up and became a grown man and starting to wear suits and all this type of stuff because for some reason, he don't want to get dirty. I don't know what it is. Nah, that ain't what it is, y'all. The Dallas Cowboys, y'all know Zeke. Y'all ruined Zeke's career. You ran him into the ground. Zeke was on his way into the Hall of Fame. That was one of the best running backs coming out of college when he came out of Ohio State. That man with him and Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey. I know I use a lot of and, 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 but guess what? This ain't English class. Those guys was the top running backs in the league for a long time. And the Dallas Cowboys, y'all ran that man into the ground. And the worst thing about it now, y'all putting him in, y'all got him and uh, the, the other dude, Dalvin Cook, and y'all subbing him in and out. Like, man, you got to put a running back in the game and give him a bunch of carries so he can get one loose. Because it's going to look like that running back look trash. Like, oh, look, Zeke, he only getting one yard here, two yards here, three yards here. He's trash. No, y'all, that's not how it goes. Running backs need a lot of carries so when they get to break one, it makes their averages look good. That's what people don't pay attention to. Because Garendo, when he came out there, he was getting one yard here, two yards here. And then on that third carry, 30 yards here. The next carry, 16 yards there. The next carry, 40 yards here. And Garendo, you are the ultimate team player, brother. But score the god dog on touchdown next time, man. Score the touchdown. You earned that. In the game. This is the Dallas Cowboys. These are our rivals. In the game. Everything about us says they're our polar opposites. We wear the ruby red. They wear blue. We wear gold. They got silver. You know what I'm saying? We got stars on our team. They got stars on their helmet. Y'all got to know we ain't on the same playing field, baby. That's all I'm saying, man. But I got to give a shout out to a few teams that have been impressing me this year, too. The Minnesota Vikings, y'all lost another game. But I got to tip y'all, tip my hat to y'all. Y'all look very impressive. Sam Darnold, way to revamp your career, brother way to turn your career around and i believe you keep playing good it's gonna be some big money by the end of the season also uh who impressed me the the, the commanders the washington command i was i'm gonna say washington team because i don't even know their name no more i don't know their name no more and i was about to say a name that's gonna get me banned you know what i'm saying the original name of the team for some reason anyway they are impressing me i know y'all want me to give credit to the kansas city thieves but it'll never happen it's never gonna happen them and the referees are 7-0, and so I, that's how I look at them. That means nothing to me. Y'all are looking like y'all going to be the New England Cheater, I mean the New England Patriots all over again. You know what I'm saying? If you look at it, Andy Reid is walking right into that Belichick role. Great defensive-minded coach. Put everything together, and he got a quarterback that looked like he's going to change the game. Don't this look all familiar all over again? And we know we ain't like seeing the New England Cheetri I mean New England Patriots win eight Super Bowls. We didn't want to see Tom Brady win it year after year after year after year after year. We don't want to see that. Same way we don't want to see this dude with this flat top curl. And yeah, I'm jealous of him because he still got his hairline. We don't want to see Pat Mahomes beat us up year after year after year after year. So I'm that's NFL, WWE, NFL, can y'all put it into this? Can y'all put it into this? Please, I don't want to see the Kansas City Thieves no more. Because somebody else, matter of fact, NFL, get out the way. Because I feel like y'all really behind why they winning. Something about y'all and the Taylor Swift connection 
and politics, money, jersey sales, all that type of stuff make me don't feel too comfortable with all of this. It just seemed like to me that all of a sudden, Kansas City looks unstoppable the moment Taylor Swift and uh, light-skinned black, white, tight end, um, whatever, what the name is, the one with the fade. He got mad at his head coach last year when they told him he didn't invent the fade. What's the Travis Kelsey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not giving him no respect. And it's disrespectful people keep telling me he's better than George Kittle. Are you serious? Do he block like George Kittle? Do he put up numbers like George Kittle? Yeah, he do. But he don't block like George Kittle. But the point I'm making is, ever since Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, the battle of the T's, uh, that looks great, TNT, bomb, boom, whatever. Ever since they got together, it made the Kansas City Chiefs look real unstoppable. And I'm not going to give them credit. Why? Because I think the NFL is behind it. And also, I'm a sore loser. Now, teams that are concerning me and shocking me is like the New Orleans Saints. Like, what happened? Like, y'all started this season off dusting teams. I mean, them first two teams, you know, the, the Carolina Panthers and the Dallas, whatever their name are. Y'all dusted them. Y'all look like y'all was the for real team. Y'all was ranked in the top five for best team in the league. And I'm not talking trash about them just because we got a victory because, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to weigh down on the New Orleans Saints. I'm just a little concerned of what happened. It looked like y'all was firing it on all cylinders, and then all of a sudden, the train got derailed, man. Is it time for Dennis Allen to get up out of there? You know? And also, what's going on with the New York Jets and Devontae Adams, man? Did you make the right decision, brother? Did you make the right decision? Because, I mean, you wasn't putting up great numbers in Vegas because a quarterback couldn't get you the ball. Now you're in New York, and you're not putting up numbers because the quarterback can't get you the ball. I'm not putting this all on Devontae Adams, you know what I'm saying? And we know Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do this thing, but maybe a little too long in the two, man. Some Father Time is undefeated, y'all. Or maybe the Jets are just, they don't have it. Maybe there's a lot more going on in that organization that we don't understand, but for Devontae Adams, dog, like if I'm going to have a bad season, I'd rather have it in Vegas. Like I'm just saying, bro, why would you want to be – out there in the cold New York, my brother, like New York City, like probably cool and all like that. You know what I'm saying? As far as like hanging out and all that. But I don't think you got nothing on Vegas. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, bro, like if you're going to suck, like suck in the better city. That's all I'm saying. If you're going to uh, pause, no diddy. If you're not going to put up great numbers like you once was and have a frustrating city, at least be able to have one of the best, be in a city with some of the best bars and hangout spots to get the game off your mind. I mean, that's all I'm saying, bro. You know, that's just my take. I ain't got nothing against New York City. Some of my favorite rappers from New York City. But I don't think the New York Jets play in New York City. I could be wrong. I think they play in like Jersey or something. I don't know. I don't know. Where, where do the New York Jets? Can somebody put that in the comment section? I don't think much people know. I don't think Devontae Adams knew exactly where they played before he wanted to go there. But I get it. You wanted to be back with Aaron Rodgers. It's a familiar thing since you had in Green Bay, but you ain't, you know, you didn't look at the situation could be different, man. You know, <laughs> lesson learned. Grass ain't green on the other side. It's greener where you water it. Now, with that being said, y'all, thank you to everybody and each and every last one of y'all that love my videos and watch my videos and support the channel. If you want to continue to support the channel and like what I'm talking about, like what I'm doing, like these little moments, all I ask you to do is simply give me a like, share, or subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, Tony Mack, where it's always real, but it's always love. Peace.